Okay guys, today I have basically a full game for you. This one went all the way to the final minute mark. And we're playing in a Shimakaze against a Midway. And there's a Rugmo and a Holland and a Gearing on the enemy team as well as Shimakaze. So we are outgunned. We have a game against CVs. There's a Petro, there's a Des Moines. So in my mind, that makes this game everything people complain about in the comments. <laughs> this is a game against superior gunboats. This is a game against radar. This is a game against aircraft carriers, all right? And I wanna show you how I play it, okay? Because every time I post a good game in a destroyer, there's inevitably someone who says, well, I bet you couldn't have done that in a Shimbakazi and if there was a carrier or if there was radar. So this is this is for all of you, all right? It is definitely possible to play in these games. It's just very difficult. And you can see how passive and patient I'm being. I'm trying to uh, bait out the enemy gunboats into overcommitting into my team. Unfortunately, we eat a Holland Torpedo. So already off to a very poor start. And... At this point, the CV has found me, so he knows exactly where I am. I smoke up right away because I don't want to take any more damage than I necessarily have to. In CV games, I treat my smoke screens as lifelines, as survival tools, all right? I don't use them to farm damage as much because it's far more important for me to retain my HP until late game. Late game destroyers are very, very strong, as we all know. And even if I do very little damage, it's okay. You can see the midway takes out rocket planes trying to find me. And I travel back to my team. This is the best way to deal with an enemy aircraft carrier. Playing near your teammates. He won't want to go searching for a destroyer. He doesn't know where it is inside enemy AA. If he doesn't know exactly where the enemy DD is, he's not going to go looking for it inside you know, Wooster AA, for example. That's just not what CV players generally do. So playing near my Wooster is a good idea. Also, playing over there on that other side of the map, I decide is a bad idea. I've got this sped up because basically nothing happens. I'm just trying to explain the thought process here really quickly. We'll slow it down in a minute once things get a little bit more interesting. Shimakaze is a ship that needs to land torpedoes in order for you to get damage or be impactful in the game. There are other ways of impacting the game, of course, but according to the game and experience and uh, uh, getting rewards out of the game, you need to deal damage and you need to get capture zones. And it's standard battle, so getting capture zones isn't really an opportunity. So eventually we'll try and get some poor pits. But here's a great way to deal with a radar cruiser, okay? We know Des Moines has a 12 kilometer radar. But his detection is 10.5 at the minimum. So what do we do? We sit within 10.5, but outside 10 kilometers. He can't radar me, but I can spot him the whole time, unless he completely reverses behind the island. That's one of the best ways to deal with a radar cruiser. You just keep them permanently spotted for your team. And eventually, your battleships or cruisers will start to focus them. That's just kind of how I generally deal with things. Now we spot the enemy Shimakaze, our gearing smokes up to try and get away. Smart play because he's on pretty low HP. But I kind of want to take a 2v1 here. We know the gearing has used his smoke and he's running away. My goal is to get the Shimakaze to shoot at me or at the enemy gear or at our gearing. And then I'll smoke up. And because the Shimakaze then has a gun bloom debuff on his concealment, then he'll be completely spotted. You know, he's shooting, so he's spotted by our gearing. And I can smoke up and farm this guy for free. This is a great tactic to use, especially if you know the enemy DD has used their smoke screen already. Unfortunately, our gearing goes down right away, so my plan didn't quite work out. But there is an example of a way to counter destroyers, even in a Shimakaze. These guns do hurt. They don't fire very quickly, but they do hurt quite a lot. And now I'm running, because the enemy Shimakaze has more health than I do. And I don't have a ton of support here, and there's an enemy Thunderer that could easily one-shot me from this HP. So we're giving ground. I'm running directly away from the Shimakaze so that the smoke screen is in between us. 
It's very important because if I went on an angle, it's possible the enemy Shimakaze would spot me earlier and the Thunder would get a shot on me, that kind of thing. It's just safer to run directly away. Now, very fortunately, the Thunder runs into four of our Torps. I was thinking he might turn out, and he did, and we got a nice little dev strike. So, uh, a good start, but only 54,000 damage in the first 10 minutes of the game. Not that amazing. Now that the Thunder is gone, I want to push up because I have a Thunder supporting me, and that enemy Shimakaze doesn't. So, I'm slightly advantaged here. I also trust myself and my ability to shoot my guns more than... Uh, that enemy, I, I think I'm better than that Shimakaze. Let's just put it that way. That might sound a little arrogant, but that's what's going on in my head and why I'm willing to push up here. It's also important that we take the ground that the enemy team gives us. It's likely the enemy Shima is running away from this side at this point. And it's important we get this ground because we've given up, essentially, for free, the 9-10 line. And that means that Petro is going to be very, very difficult to deal with. So we need to gain some ground on another side of the map. We can't get penned in in our cap zone. That's how you lose games. You, As soon as you get shot at from both sides of the map, essentially you're in a massive crossfire, that's how you lose games. I want to note another thing I'm doing here. I'm trying to position myself in between where I think the enemy Shimakaze is, which is right there, and my Thunderer. You can see that I'm basically perfectly positioned like that, and that's so that I can spot torpedoes. This Thunderer is maybe going to go down. We'll see. <laughs> Considering that he's pushing in. But it's better that he knows where the torps are coming from than if he didn't, right? Because Shimakaze torps hurt, as we saw on the enemy Thunder. <laughs> so this is something you can do to help your battleships push in. This isn't necessarily something that's going to get you experience. This isn't going to help you... Um, you know, research things better or anything, but it can help you get wins a lot easier because you're helping your teammates play to the best of their abilities. Now, our Thunder is likely going to go down here. The Goliath is just difficult to deal with for any battleship. <laughs> that ship's kind of crazy tanky. But um, you can see how the enemy aircraft carrier has had a hard time locating me. It's because I haven't been spamming my guns. I haven't been alerting him to my position. And for the most part, aircraft carriers will get bored of just chasing destroyers, and they'll want to deal damage. Not all of them. There's a few that just hyper-focus on destroyers the whole game, and if that's the case, then you do have to play nearer to your teammates than I am right now. I'm taking a risk here in doing this, this play, but I think it's going to help get this Des Moines killed. That's my goal right now, is get that Des Moines killed. Enemy Shima pops up. We start shooting him early, and it looks like he tried to torp us there. Right? Anytime a destroyer doesn't shoot you right away, you should assume that they're torping you. I slow down and then I try to speed up using my speed boost, mitigating majority of the damage the Goliath did. And there you go. Enemy Shimakaze killed, and I pop my smoke right away. That's so that I don't eat another salvo from the Goliath. And that's very important, because I don't have very much HP left. 6,000, he could easily do that in one shot. And there's also still a full health Holland to deal with. So I decided that it's better to retain my HP that I have left than keep the smoke screen to maybe deal with the Holland a little bit. Fortunately, we still have our Smallland, so it's unlikely that I'm going to have to deal with that Holland. But that's the reason I don't push in here right away. I'm nervous about the Holland. I'm nervous about the enemy CV knowing exactly where I am. Because I did just get into a gunfight. So the enemy CV should see my last known location on the minimap, and that's why I'm running away from it. I'm not taking the ground that's being given by the enemy team, I'm running away. And I see my Worcester pushing up the uh, four line there, and I think to myself, well he's got pretty good AA, why don't I go play next to him? And that allows me to take some ground. But this is the mindset you have to have when you're in a destroyer in an aircraft carrier game. You always have to consider where were you last spotted? And where's your closest teammates uh, for safety? Relative safety. You're banking on the fact that an enemy aircraft carrier won't want to throw away planes just to find you. They'll throw away planes to deal damage to you. That's for sure. You know that. But if he doesn't know exactly where you are, then they're less likely to just wander into Worcester AA, in my mind. That's, that's what I 
bank on. And so far, it's worked out quite well for me when I'm playing Destroyer in these CV games. And even in this game, you can see it's worked out quite well. And in Shimakaze, because we're relying on our torpedoes majority of the time, it's very easy to stay stealthy for the majority of the game. And what am I doing here? I'm just spotting. I'm getting some spotting damage. I'm trying to give my team the best knowledge that they can, so that they can deal damage. They can hopefully win this game. Now we spot a Petro, and that's scary, so you see me instantly turn away. I am within radar range. It's unlikely he pops radar right now, since he's no longer detected. But just in case, I'm getting near to an island. You can see I'm still outside of this island. I'm not hiding behind it. But I'm near enough to an island where I think I can get to safety before um, the enemy team gets a good shot on me. And that's a theme. When you're in a Shimakaze or a gunboat DD on low health, or you're just in a ship that has lower damage output or sustain in a fight against a destroyer, you want to have an island near to you that you can just tuck in behind and be safe for a little bit. That's the goal. You can see the midway finally does come over here and find us, but I think that was more to deal damage to the Wooster, who was pushing in re recklessly, and not to just suicide in to find me. And fortunately, he lost most of his planes, and it looks like he's kind of low on the uh, rocket planes. You can see my teammate wanted me to smoke up the Wooster. That probably would have been a good play if I had any smokes left, but unfortunately we used them all to help us survive, and I think that is probably more important. Now we get to launch a really nice torpedo attack on the Montana and Conqueror, so hopefully that works out. That'll really help us win this game. And you can see our team actually just took out the Midway. That is a huge deal, but... We're not playing like there's no planes in the sky yet. You can see I'm running back to my Petro. My goal is to get inside his and the Stalingrad's AA range, which is 6.6, .6, I think, or 6.9, somewhere in there. And as long as I'm within that range, it's unlikely, again, that he's going to come for me. We don't know that there's uh, no planes in the sky because CVs, again, have a three-minute timer on their final squad that they launch. But it looks like now that we don't see any planes, he probably didn't get any planes off. So now we have a little bit more freedom. And it turns out our torpedo strike on the Montana and Conqueror was a really, really, really good one. They moved fairly predictably. But you notice the Holland is back. Um, and it's a good thing I moved away from where I was because if I got into a fight with that Holland, I probably would have died because I wouldn't have had smoke, and he has way more HP and way more help than I do if I was, say, up on the DE line, that kind of thing. One thing I didn't point out earlier that I probably should have is I always look, as, as long as there's only one destroyer left on the enemy team, I'm always looking out for where their torpedoes are. And about five minutes ago, when I was playing near where that Wooster was, that kind of thing, and up near the Shimakaze, you know, killing him up in the north there, I noticed that there were torpedoes going through our main cap that were launched from around G8 area. And so that let me know that I had some time before the Holland got back to his base. And with our Smalland chasing that Holland back, um, that let me know that the Holland was probably coming back to base. And that's another reason I went down to our Petro in Stalingrad to try and get some support there. Your goal is to play around your teammates. That is the theme of this video, and it really allows your ship to do well. And it helps your team do well as well. Right now, I'm just trying to spot for my team. Again, I'm not hiding behind an island. I am just trying to spot for my team. But you can see where I'm positioned. I'm again near an island that gives me good cover if I get spotted. I do have a concealment advantage on the Holland, so I'll be out spotting him first, and it's likely that I'll be able to duck behind cover before I take much damage. You can see the Holland gets spotted and we get ready to shoot him a little bit because why not? We have an island here next to us for cover and the Holland is focused on the small end right now. So it'll take him a little bit to turn his guns and while he's doing that we can get maybe one or two salvos into him for free. And now we duck behind this island as he focuses us and look at that. We actually take no damage. It's very easy to play like this if you plan ahead. 
Planning ahead is so important in a Shimakaze, in a CV game, in a game with radar, in a game with destroyers that have much more DPM than you. Planning ahead makes it way, way, way easier to play. And you can see, I just back out here. I don't, I'm not that scared of that Holland rushing me because I have a Petro near me and a Stalin near me and a Thunderer near me. If he comes around this corner, I launched one set of torps for him to come around this corner. The other two are for the Montana. And I'm just waiting here, hoping he comes around. But he gets spotted briefly by the radar. He's moving away. So I back out and I'm going to try and get shots on him for when our Smallin spots him. Very, very, very simple things to help your team. And Shimakaze guns hurt. They don't fire often. They might have poor arcs, but they do quite a bit of damage. You can see I'm just trying to play it safe here. But the clock is about to tick out, and there's a full game where we lived against a midway, two radars, and a few destroyers that have much higher DPM than us. A great game, a great result, and I think a very good example of how you can still play destroyer against some things that are supposedly hard counters that are impossible to play against. Um, yeah, so we're second on XP. Our small one played incredibly well as well. And we got three kills and a lot of torpedo hits. Really, a lot of our XP came down to killing the Shima and getting that giant torpedo strike on the Monty, Thunder, and Conqueror. <laughs> so the way I have my Shima is probably how a lot of people play their Shima, and that's for a torpedo build. I don't build guns on this thing anymore. I used to actually build guns a little bit. Uh, when BFT was a three-pointer and it gave you 10% instead of just 5%. But for now, I think running the full torpedo build with Adrenaline Rush is a good thing. Survivability Expert, in my mind, is a must, as is Last Stand. So the way I have this is Grease the Gears, Last Stand, Survivability Expert, Concealment. I think that's your basic 10-point commander on a Shimakaze. You could run something like Preventive Maintenance instead of Grease the Gears... Uh, or even incoming fire alert if you're not sure about when people are shooting at you. But for me, this is what I would go with for the first 10 points. And then I would get fill the tubes after that. And then I would get adrenaline rush. And then I'd get swift fish. Um, and then finally, for your last points, I would probably go with superintendent. Eventually, once you get a 21 point commander, that gives you that extra smoke that maybe would have helped that Worcester live a little bit longer. Extra speed boost to get around the map faster. Always very nice to have. Equipment-wise, I run, again, torpedoes, concealment, uh, propulsion mod. Very common one for destroyers. Gets you moving faster, hopefully dodging shells, dodging torpedoes, that kind of thing, when you're stationary. I run torpedo tubes mod 1 as well. And engine room protection and main armaments mod 1. If you're not going to go grease the gears... Um, maybe running main battery mod 2 is a good idea. I just prefer getting these 74 knot torps that go 12 kilometers and deal t nearly 24,000 damage. They're fast and they hit really hard, as you could see. Chimikaze's fun, and that's how you play it in a CV, radar, and gunboat DD game. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.